G'day. How's it going? Welcome to what is essentially a review series. Today I'll look at video streaming services, which according to research company Roy Morgan, is an industry that's seen growth of around 10% in the last year, and around half of all Australians are users. And while it's important to look at each app individually and see which has the best design or best TV shows, this show is more about asking why, what was the plan, and how could things have played out differently. So for better or worse, video streaming services have made the idiot box available in the palm of our hands. Essentially, they're online video stores. You can download an app and have access to hundreds or even thousands of titles, and all you need is access to the internet. Netflix is undoubtedly king, but the landscape has shown growth for a lot of players in the industry. Also, a study by Deloitte showed that more than 30% of subscribers on subscription video service apps had multiple subscriptions to different apps. So not only is there more choice than ever, it's increasingly common to have more than one, which makes sense because they're all different. So before we talk about which ones are the best and which ones aren't worth it, let's answer the first question. Why don't we just get them all? I mean, they all have a subscription model, which makes it really easy for absolutely everybody. For millennials who research shows and not taking up credit cards the way that generations before them have, for time poor consumers, and also from a value perspective. You get an all-you-can-eat buffet of TV shows and movies for a fixed monthly price. But because it's so easy is the exact reason we need to be careful. Because realistically, you're less likely to cancel an automatic charge every month. There are entire companies now dedicated to helping you find your subscriptions and manage them because people forget that they're there or they just keep putting off getting around to canceling. Now, don't get me wrong, people will eventually cancel their subscriptions if they're not finding value in them, and it needs to be relatively easy for them to do so. Otherwise, people are gonna take it out on the company, for sure. But it skews in the company's favor. Ordinarily, if you go away on holiday or your lifestyle changes and you no longer need a product, then you just stop buying it. Your subscription, on the other hand, is just easy to keep there just in case because, hey, it's actually easier to get, keep on paying it than it is to cancel and then have to reactivate or resubscribe somewhere later. This is why most video streaming service providers have free trials. So they can close their arms around you and smother your face in their warm bosom of binge watching before they start to charge you. And by then, you can't bear to let go of those boobs because of the way they make you feel. It's also why the ACCC has warned Aussies about being duped by subscriptions they've unintentionally built up. But hey, I hear the best way to get over one bosom is to just nestle your face into another. So the good news is that with free trials, you can actually theoretically get all video streaming service apps at least to try. And even if you aren't looking for them all, you may as well still seek out a free trial. If you can't get one through the company directly, look around online or ask your phone company. Telstra, for example, has some good discounts to streaming services as value add to their own products. I say value add, assuming that your relative value is sitting on the beefcake side of the seesaw. So the moral here is, be careful which ones you get and make sure you keep on top of them. So I know you're dying to know, which is the best? It's an interesting question. It used to be in Australia that Foxtel was a monopoly in their field when it was all done through a box and a satellite or a cable. So much so that people used to use the term interchangeably when describing pay TV itself. Have you got Foxtel? I'd ask my friends excitedly when I went to their houses as a kid and saw a box near the TV because it meant that not only could I watch things I couldn't watch at home, but their activities would be easy for the most part and not awkward, playing with their toys, following a storyline that didn't make sense. 
Do you find it strange when kids, they make up the rules, they have no respect for a good story, a good plot, and then their toys kill all your toys, and your toys can't kill their toys. Their toys are somehow immune to dying, but it's their house and their toys, so you just have to listen to them? But that's no longer the case. And I'm not referring to the rules of toy warfare. Kids are still making up the most bizarre shit to try and win games. I'm talking about Foxtel losing their monopoly of installing hardware across a physical network to provide customers with content. We've gone from asking people if they have Foxtel as an adjective for pay TV to adding to the other vocabularies a new adjective if people are watching Netflix in reference to any video streaming service. So obviously Netflix have the overwhelming majority of market share at the moment. And while they don't usually release numbers, research suggests it's approaching 10 million. Foxtel Now and Stan both have decent portions of the market while huge growth shows YouTube Premium, Fetch, HeyU and Amazon Prime might also become huge players. And KU has only just launched, but to a hell of a lot of hype, so it's one to watch. To understand who is best though, we really need to delve into the market and what is driving these companies. Price though is something that is relatively easy to compare on in terms of who's the best. So, so let's start there. Amazon Prime is undoubtedly the best price. Not just for what you get, but the lowest price out of all for now. Netflix and Stan are around the middle, Foxtel Now is slightly higher, but they disappointingly separate their content into different packages. So adding multiple packs can get pretty costly. YouTube Premium is at the higher end as well, for sure. While we're at it, Foxtel owned KU, a sport dedicated content platform, is $25 per month. So nearly double what I'd call about mid-range. To put that in comparison, the only other genre-focused platform out there at the moment, reality TV brewpot Hey You, is just $6.99. But it's going to be less about price and more about what you get for that price though, right? I'm sure every company will tell you that their platform is the best for a different reason. And I'm fairly sure Foxtel will tell you theirs is the best because of their content. Basically, Foxtel and Foxtel Now are a reseller of HBO and MTV, so sure, they do have a lot of good content. Geordie Shaw, am I right? And they've got a lot of shows that are really fueling the hype machine. Not all though. And content is a very important part of analysing the TV subscription apps out there. I mean, Heyu's whole market proposition is based on content. The reality TV to the core, Geordie Shaw. Am I right? But Foxhell have bet big on content being their saviour before. And it didn't pay off. With their traditional cable and satellite pay TV product, in 2014 they signed an exclusive deal for the rights of Game of Thrones Season 4 in Australia. What that meant is that the show was not made immediately available on digital retailers like iTunes. So the only way to watch that 10 episode season was to pay Fox Hill and take a hard day off work to get equipment set up and then pay around $100 a month for a whole heap of channels you don't need if you didn't already have it. So did Australians buy up big on Fox Hill like the company hoped for? Of course not. We staged a bloody coup. In fact, so many Australians downloaded Game of Thrones illegally that year that Australia was placed into the upper echelon of illegal pirates with an estimated 15.4 million illegal downloads. To put that in perspective, that year we downloaded more illegal episodes of Game of Thrones than the US or China did. We almost downloaded as many illegal episodes as India did at 16 million. So, Great work team on proving that Australians are in fact the dirty convicts we started out as. But it really sums Foxtel well and their attitude. And that they've been more focused on a physical outdated TV solution than taking a leap of faith and embracing new trends and everything going through the internet. 
You can't really blame them for clinging to it though. It's been their bread and butter since the dawn of time and although decreasing, it still generates a heap of revenue for them. But you're definitely not going to give them a medal for going into the digital only space with their Foxtel Now solution when it's something that they should have tried to embrace years ago rather than waiting until Netflix was too much of a competitor to ignore. See, Foxtel are in a new space with a different sort of app, but they aren't completely entering a new market, are they? So why wouldn't they convert their existing fixed Foxtel customer base over to their new digital solution and really win at the market share of this video streaming thing. What was their plan here? Well, it does seem that they are still clinging to that cash cow of the old system. Even now on the internet and free to air TV, I still see more ads trying to get people to sign up to that old school solution than the one click and it's on your phone, Foxtel Now. And not only have Foxtel not jumped at the chance to convert their traditional customers over to Foxtel Now, They've made it difficult for customers to do so. Online help pages show confused customers at a standstill because they can't sign up for Foxtel now with the same email address they used for their old traditional Foxtel service. Whether this is once again Foxtel severely overestimating the value in their product or a planned attempt at trying to avoid customers at jumping ship when offering them an alternative solution, I'm not sure. Either way, Netflix strode into the Australian market and swooned us with their modern charm, Netflix and chill. Mm -hmm. I had some free trials and they, they're winning. Netflix weren't going to experience any cannibalization of sales if they asked customers to switch platforms. So they stole a hell of a lot of Fox Sales customers by simply getting in there and offering something other than the monopoly that they'd experienced so far. Just because customers have bought your product year after year, forever, doesn't mean they like it, Foxtel. So Foxtel Now, the streaming digital only app, could have been such a good strategy for retaining customers, Foxtel, in the market overall. But instead, it's just a knee-jerk reaction. Stan, a complete newcomer, has, according to research, managed to claim about as much ground as Foxtel now has. This is likely because its owners Channel 9 and Fairfax had both already been knocked down aside by the loss in revenue caused by changing customer trends and digital habits in the media. So by the time streaming apps were a thing, these companies were trying to get ahead. Foxtel can milk their fixed customers all they want. But they're going to need to choose eventually because they can't have their Fox on now and cling to their traditional revenue too. Not when video streaming services exist with no setup fees. And that's part of the reason I'm not really going to consider Fetch TV either because although the box doesn't require a technician or holes in the walls, there is a box and it's expensive, around $400. Although I do think it's worth noting that their packages are around six bucks each per month. So around 25 bucks, you can get all of them. And let's just say the content looks familiar. I think Good Gear Guide stated it best in their review. If you've used Foxtel recently, much of the content will look very similar, except that it's laid out better, is navigable with a responsive and functioning remote and costs a whole lot less. Well, that's glowing, isn't it? The only things they suck at are the only things you want from a TV service. Bar one, content, which is recreated somewhere else. They did realize too late that Netflix was filling a gap that they could quite easily have plugged on their own and they did rush their Foxtel Now product to market. Now, depending on which way you look at it, this might have been a bad move because the app was one hell of a clunky machine when it first came out. User reports and reviews talk of the inability to continue watching shows on different devices within the same account, and the app forgetting where users are up to, and even forgetting the shows that people were watching. 
it seems like they released a half-cooked app. Still, considering they can't change their history of bad decisions, I actually think the premature release was the best move they've made in a long time. Because even though the app was clunky, if they had delayed to perfect it and waited until juggernauts like Amazon Prime and YouTube Premium had entered the Australian market, then they would undoubtedly be facing a much tougher time right now. So instead of a fully functioning bug-free app, they launched with extensive trial offers, like the 12-month free trial offer. But any company who wants to be successful at that platform needs to do this. They need to move quickly and adapt. We've seen Netflix, Stan and Amazon Prime all change on the fly and it's a good thing for us as consumers as it means there's constant changes that are happening. Nowadays, the Foxtel Now app is much better with a lot of the bugs fixed. But you have to ask the question, how good could this app have been if they'd invested as much in developing it as they did on securing exclusives and advertising for their dying traditional platform? Or how much faster could they have fixed those bugs? So what does usability look like overall? Well, Netflix as a benchmark is right up there. Is it set up in a visually appealing way that is really intuitive? From the details of predictive searching and other suggestions when you can't find what you're looking for, to the absolute saving grace of TV. Skipping the credits at the end and being able to skip through a recap. This is something Fox and Now and Stan haven't managed to do yet, although Amazon Prime have recently implemented this crucial feature to the user experience. So that you don't have to wait through every episode's credits on a binge. Searching is also fairly less than desirable on the others when compared to Netflix at this stage. YouTube Premium, though, is really the extension of the YouTube that you know and Google have been perfecting over a long period of time. So the user experience and recommendations is overall a really good one. And while it is a safe bet that people using HeyU, the reality TV one, or KU, which is the solely dedicated to sport one, aren't going to need to search too hard to discover new content that fits their taste. But there are important tools for the longevity of a service when we're not looking at content-specific platforms. Although they do have some runaway success stories like Black Mirror, Bird Box, Making a Murderer, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, Riverdale, etc, etc. Netflix market share really comes from their ability to keep you watching. Suggesting what you might like based on what you've watched before and teeing new things up for you before the next show even plays. They market their shows to you in a way that feels like they're helping you which is entirely what good marketing is anyway. It's definitely a stark contrast to Stan, Amazon Prime and Foxtel now. We don't really consider what you've been watching, but do suggest similar shows to the one you're looking at right now. It really feels like a cop-out when you consider that they have all your viewing data right there available. You know what I like? Why don't you use it? Suggestions of popular shows and new additions feel like ads too. Stan does these massive banners. And Foxtel now does this with traditional ads, which just feel like uh, ads. I mean, I was getting ads for the freaking cricket. Now, some people love watching the cricket, but not me. I hate watching the cricket. I got the pop pack described by Foxtel now as the best choice of entertainment, comedy, drama, and reality TV, including every new HBO drama and Foxtel original. And I've never watched or searched for any sport or any shows associated with sport on it or on this or any other apps. So what? They're just throwing ads out now like jelly beans hoping they hit someone that it appeals to? Interesting seeing how a large part of the proposition for YouTube Premium and Channel 10's access all areas venture into paid subscription service is no ads. Whether charging for these shows that people know without ads is going to work for Channel 10, I'm not sure. It might very well because they do have some exclusive new shows, even if I don't know any of them. 
and they're going hard with their free trial offer right now. But are we really ready for back-to-back -back neighbors binges without ads to break up the tension between Toadie and one of his many lovers? What I do know we're ready for is YouTube that doesn't stop playing when you close the app, which YouTube Premium allows. And I did mention that content was important, but the point here is that it's less about having the content and more about keeping people watching. That's why Netflix's original content strategy works and the whole reason why YouTube was so successful in the first place. So this points out the direction that others need to be heading in, which is how to suggest new content to users based on what they like. Data is the key to everything. It's 2019. If you're not using the data that you have about your customers, then you're doing something wrong. You need to change it or you're an idiot. And at the moment, it feels like they have a build it and they will come sort of attitude in that they expect that people will always know what they want to watch and be able to find it on their platform. I find this pretty concerning from a strategy perspective because sometimes you've already watched the latest shows and you want to watch something more in that style but you just don't know what. What do Foxhell or Amazon Prime expect you to do once you finish watching all of Game of Thrones or The Walking Dead? That new show. The Little Drum Girl. Looks good, but it's not in my Foxtel Now pack. Even though you would think the best choices they described would be a show that they're advertising on Facebook. Nor can I figure out which pack it's even on to get that pack. And what about encouraging people to take up new shows? Foxtel Now has the latest season of Outlander. Good on them. But I haven't seen seasons one to three, and they aren't on there. So what a bloody lot of good that does me. It's just a good thing that Netflix has seasons one to three, hey? So I'll just watch that and leave Foxtel now for a time and until the free trial expires. Unless I forget. And although Amazon Prime aren't the greatest at suggesting new content, what they do have is an awesome supply of content and the value with it goes far beyond just streaming TV. It's pretty impressive the way that it links to the other side of their business and exploits the shopping aspect further. So it really feels like they're heading in a customer focused direction and the changes so far they've made show that they're listening and adapting in terms of what customers want. Because I think that's another key lesson here not just those that do the best job at hooking you in will succeed, but those that can show you a value add overall, whether that is endless content that suits you, or access to shopping, or other features. So while we're going throwing around words like best, well, Amazon Prime are the best for value, and Netflix are the best for keeping us entertained, which in a way, both of those are exactly what you're looking for. The experience of being entertained and everything that comes with that experience. And if this keeps tracking, I expect both of these companies to continue to grow the most in terms of customer base over the next few years. The others don't use their customer data nearly enough. Not only do Foxtel now need to start using viewing data, they also desperately need to consolidate, reorganize, and backdate their content so that they don't confuse customers or scare more of them away. To be honest though, which app is best for you to download and use right now is not really a question I'm able to answer. Sadly, it all does come down to content, the way that Foxtel always wanted it to. Because every app has different content exclusive to it, and we're going to want to watch different things on multiple apps. The Outlander example I mentioned before. And even though their content structure, their design, their marketing and pricing may fall down compared to their competitors, the ease of access and relatively small price tag when you compare it to the traditional old school system may mean that their bet on content might actually work this time 
But see, there's also a high chance that it won't work. Unless Foxtel wake up to the fact that it's their game to lose, especially as their app goes through its second year and their competitors close in. Because new research suggests that the growing number of competitors in this market are actually causing people to get fed up and come to the exact conclusion that I just did. That it doesn't really matter whose app is best because it's all about the content and to get the content you want, you're gonna to have to have a bunch of different apps. And there are too many apps with exclusive content. Apps like Foxtel Now that are confusing and soulless because they expect that it's the content that you want and the content that you'll chase so they don't have to try. And this research tells us that they're right. As well as an experience, above all, people are chasing content. But instead of getting all the apps or the packages or whatever, people are heading straight back to torrents and illegal downloads, which after a long time of decreased use are now ramping right back up again. So if this is gonna be a trend that grows throughout the next couple of years, it's gonna get harder to get customers on board or to keep customers. And then it's not just gonna be Foxtel who are in trouble. However, if Foxtel do keep advertising their old school box in the wall solution to me on their new streaming platform, then they may as well throw out the anchor now because they're gonna sink and consumers aren't gonna stay on board with them.